Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and you are joining me on my quest to try and unlock better smoking performance out of the Weber Summit Kamado, more similar to what I'm used to getting off of my Kamado Joe. The first issue that I ran into is this second generation heat deflector plate no longer is foldable. I can't access my fire. And so whatever I could get in there from smoking wood is all I could add. And there's not enough heat retained in the bottom for me to use something like I would do in my Kamado Joe where I load smoking wood in the ash drawer. So my first idea to fix this was to pick up something like this SNS basket. This would allow me to have access to my fire, the entire cook, supplement it with any extra charcoal or wood that I needed. But the downside that I've noticed here is unlike any Weber kettle that I've used where I can rotate the top, the summit is in a fixed position. There's no rotating it. Plus, I can't move the exhaust vent over to the side. So if I have my fire over here is adding some smoke wood, it would roll over the dome and I would get sort of a good looking bark. But what was really noticeable, particularly on chicken, is this is dirty smoke because the smoke is coming up cooling, stagnating, kind of lingering before uh, exiting out the center of the dome. And so I wasn't really happy with the smoke results. So I don't think the SNS basket is the answer to my problems. But today I have a new idea, which is borrowing my Big Joe Series 1 Divide and Conquer rack. I've already test fit this and on paper, I think it's going to work. The Series 3 is too tall and the dome won't close, but on series one, we can just get it in there. So we are going to cook up some beef ribs using the dividing cocker rack from a Big Joe series one and see if this helps get a more similar result to what I'm used to. Let me show you how to prep our beef ribs and I'll rejoin you back over here to fire up our summit. Okay, so our beef ribs have just come out of a 24 hour dry brine. I am super impressed with these Costco beef ribs. This came in a two pack. I'm only going to do one today, save the other one for another cook. But this is about 50 Canadian, 30 bucks US. We've got a nice age on these already. Uh, great marbling. Super excited. 30 bucks. This is amazing. So I'm going to start by adding just a little bit of a binder. Uh, you can use anything for a binder, but I love something like Truff uh, because it gives us a little bit of that umami uh, that you get with the mushroom flavor and a little bit of hot sauce that doesn't come through in the finished product, but definitely adds a little bit of depth. I've had some of the results with any truffle oil, so it doesn't have to be just this. It, it is rather expensive, so if you're able to find something for less money, by all means, knock yourself out. But I'm just going to get a little bit of a binder on here to help our rub adhere. After the dry brine, everything is really dry to the touch. So if we were just to hit it right now with our rub, it would fall off. So unlike when we open it from the packaging, you don't really need uh, a binder. At this stage, we definitely do. That looks good. So I'm going to start with the bottom. We'll finish on our presentation side. So we've already got salt on here. So I'm going to go for uh, a little bit of onion powder. I've got garlic, some chili flakes some paprika, cayenne, I dropped some of my Lowry's flying, but I've got some Lowry's as well. We're not going to go too aggressively as this is very concentrated salt, but I like just a little bit of salt finishing on the tongue and then some fresh cracked black pepper. So the reason I like to go for these sort of flavor profiles is salt, pepper, garlic in general is a great combination on beef. But onion adds a little bit of, you know, sweetness. Garlic is going to add a little bit of savory. The chili flakes as well as the cayenne is going to add some heat. These are the types of things, the umami adding sort of the that depth, that smokiness. These are the types of things that stand up to smoke really, really well. Anything that's milder like, um, you know, thyme or rosemary, aromatics don't tend to hold up to an all day smoke session. Whereas these flavor profiles really do continue to shine even at the end of a long smoke session. So that's why I've gone with our rub ingredients today. Take it fast forward while I get the rest of these flakes on as well as our paprika and pepper. And then we'll finish the presentation side last. And then we'll finish with our fresh cracked black pepper. I do recommend that you don't need to use what I'm doing here at Pepper Can, and I like it because I can control the mesh really specifically and grind up a bunch of other things. But cracking your pepper fresh will really help highlight the spice profile of pepper. Uh, mentioning that's one of the things that stands through. This makes a big difference versus buying something that might be going a little bit stale and starting to already lose its flavor. 
these look good. Let's go get them on. Okay, so I'll drop in my divide and conquer rack. I've gotten just a little bit of an angle. You have to push this down a little bit. I noticed it was just rubbing a touch more on the front because of where these bolts are. So by avoiding the bolts, by going on a bit of an angle, that helps solve the uh, fitment issue. And I'm able to open and close the dome without too much trouble. So let's get a couple of pieces of smoking wood. I'm gonna put some cherry here right on the bottom. Low charcoal grate. Open up a bag of Fogo charcoal here. Cover up our smoking wood. Grab our grill blazer grill gun, start a fire nice in the center. Our heat deflectors, which are gonna sit on the lower ring of the divide and conquer rack. This is giving us a little bit more clearance from our fire, which I do like. It's going to breathe a little bit better, allow us to fit in some more charcoal, but I'm not gonna be able to fit many extra deflectors in because this is the series one or two rack. I can get a drip pan under there and our cooking grids. So we're cruising along right about 260 degrees. Let's drop these into the center so that our drip pan can catch everything. Let those smoke. We'll start spraying in about two hours. Okay, let's take a look, see how we are doing. I've been spraying about every hour or so with a mixture of 50% apple cider vinegar, 50% water. Let's get a temperature. So we're getting close, 193, 195, 196, but that still feels quite tight. I don't know if you can see here, but you see it's like it's grabbing on to the probe and trying to hang on and lift the beef rib. What we really want is uh, sort of like a room temperature butter. If I go down towards, um, work our way towards the point end, I should be a little bit softer right where I know there was a lot of intermuscular fat. So right there, that is what we are looking for everywhere. So we're at 201 right there and incredibly tender. I know I'm probing a a bit of a fat pocket, which is why I'm getting that tenderness, but that's what I want down here in this meat where right now it's a little bit cooler and grabbing on. So we'll continue to spray, but we are probably maybe only about 30 minutes or so away from this being done at this point, And we'll let these rest and be ready to slice. Let's take a look at our smoking wood. I tried once again to add everything and I'm noticing there's just a little catch here. If I, once we got some heat in, the dome started to rub a little bit more than what it did when everything was cold. It's not lifting it out of place, but a little bit of rub. Yeah, it's, it's not doing anything. In fact, I can, this, this is <laughs> cold to the touch. So these wood chips aren't even close to combusting because I can put my hand right down in here. So even with the heat deflector plate from the Komodo Joe and trying to run a little bit of a hotter fire, that is not helping with the supplemental wood chip. So I think unless we were to insulate this, this idea is completely out in the summit. All right, gather around boys and girls. It's time to see how we did. Let's carve up our beef ribs here. Woo, <laughs> it almost falls not only off the cutting board, but right off the bone. So we are tender. A little bit better luck that time. See how we did on our fat render. Pretty good, getting nice running fat. This could have broken down a little bit more. It's on its way to becoming sort of that golden brown color versus pure white. Not bad, not perfect. Over here, that's definitely what we want down near the bones is what we want. That looks good. Go all the way here. I'm using my offset dowel strong slicer just makes it a little bit easier to not hack away and hit my knuckles on the board. And again, that, see that outer part, that looks good. So that I would say is on its way to properly rendered. Again, I was starting to pull here, but if I just tug that ever so slightly, you can see oh, last little bit of membranes hanging on but give it a little bit of a pull and we are completely clean off the bone. So that, that's, I think pretty, I think that's a pretty good cook. Let's get a couple slices here and drive in for our taste test. Mm. <laughs> I love beef ribs. Mm. We're gonna focus on the smoke though. Let me finish this piece how we did. Okay, so there's a couple results just immediately obvious starting with the easy ones i love beef ribs and i love these beef ribs 
these are really good. I love brisket on a stick and today did not disappoint. The flavor, right where we want it. That overnight dry brine, our trough binder, all the rubs and dry rub ingredient that we did is awesome. And I've been working on sort of recreating some of the things that are in that Texas barbecue monthly rub. So I've been trying to create a little bit closer to the black rub, which won my three way head to head, which is why I added chili flakes and a couple other ingredients today. And this tastes remarkably close. Again, not same day comparison, but I think our dry rub is getting really, really close to what the black rub, uh, which won my blind taste test uh, had. That's great. Binder's great. Getting into the smoke though, the whole point of today's experiment was to try and close the gap to get closer to what I'm doing on my Kamado Joe's, which is trying to get closer to what I'm doing on my offset smokers. And so the tricks that I would reach for in my Kamado Joe to try and close that gap would be adding a water pan, doing double indirect, or supplementing the wood chips uh, or chunks in the bottom ash drawer. And the divide and conquer rack in the summit, while it does fit, albeit a little bit of a rub, just trying to open and close that dome, it's just not quite a perfect fit. It, it does fit and we can use it and it opens up a little bit more height, allows us to get in uh, a little bit more charcoal underneath or have a little bit more breathing room and take advantage of the multi-level cooking, which I do love uh, on my Kamado Joe's but it doesn't help solve the problem that we're after in terms of improving the smoke quality or allowing us to add more smoke. It's still no easier to access our fire, even though with high heat gloves, I could reach down and remove a half grid and remove a half deflector. And I could then be able to add some wood, which I didn't do today. And maybe, you know, I should have because the original Weber Summit grid is, you know, sort of one solid piece. The deflector is one solid piece. So there is a little bit more utility, if you want to call it that with the Komodo Joe Divine and Conquer Rack, um, but not as easy as what I'm used to where we don't even need to fuss with our food. If it was a large brisket or many racks of ribs, this would not be an option. So because it's not really an option for a full capacity cook, I don't think it's really an option here today. The other thing you have to think about is I'm not really sure uh, the cost, I'll put it up on the screen, but this is starting to add a fairly substantial cost on top of the summit, which is already more expensive than what I paid for my Big Joe series one. And so I'm not sure exactly what if the complete racking system, two deflectors and cooking grates come to, but I think, you know, from memory, it's a couple hundred bucks. And so this is not an inexpensive uh, option, even though it absolutely does fit. So now that I've done a couple other tests, I think we are getting ready to do the head to head because again, speculation from comparing different cooks from different weeks is all well and good, but I want to see how they actually do head to head. So make sure you've got the notification bell turned on. You're subscribed. So you're alerted when I do my proper head to head, same uh, protein on two different grills and find out which turns out the absolute best results. And I'll be sure to invite a couple other people along to help with a blind taste test. That's it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.